Hi guys, it's me Chazer HD and welcome to this race review of the Belgian Grand Prix of 2019. But before we get into reviewing the race, and it was a very good race, there is something that of course matters a lot more than racing. And that is the sad events that happened in the Formula 2 feature race at Spa on Saturday evening involving uh, Antoine Hubert and Juan Manuel Correa and sadly the crash that happened on lap 2 at the top of the Eau Rouge Radion section sadly took the life of Antoine Hubert at only 22 years old. Now guys as you may have noticed I did not do a race watch along because for me it was disrespectful to do one so quickly after this had happened. I didn't feel it was right to do so. And also emotionally, I was not in the right place after seeing the crash on live TV. I just couldn't get that out of my mind. And I've been very, very emotional in the last 24 hours or so. So I just couldn't do it. And yeah, I just didn't feel it was right to do that. But, you know, it's such a sad thing because the guy was definitely a star of the future. He won GP3 in 2018. He had won two races in 2019 in Formula 2 at Monaco, only just, but a great win by him. And then his last win of his career, his home Grand Prix in front of all the Renault people, all the French fans. Such an emotional victory. And sadly, that is his last victory of his career. But even though, again, you know, today we've had a great race, I think we must remember that despite the great race we've had today and you know all the great stuff that happened that all the drivers in today's formula one grand prix and in motorsport all around the world all of these drivers put their lives on the line to entertain us and we should be very very grateful of that and i think we should all definitely pay respect to antoine for the great career he's had um and just pay respect to any you know racing driver you see because again they put their lives on the line to entertain us and to be as great as they are and again as i've said on twitter and in other places may antoine hubert rest in peace but now guys we will go on to the belgian grand prix and what happened in that race here are the race results. By the way, credit to motorsport.com for this graphic. I'm not trying to, you know, steal it or anything. This is the only one I could find. Here is the race results of the Belgian Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc is your race winner only just from Lewis Hamilton. It really is fitting that Charles Leclerc won this race considering what has happened this weekend. Valtteri Bottas third, Sebastian Vettel fourth, Alexander Albin fifth, Sergio Perez P6, Daniel Kvyat P7, Nico Hulkenberg P8, Pierre Gasly P9, and Lance Stroll in P10. And then out of the race, um, Lando Norris in P11. He DNF'd on the, I guess you could say on the final lap because he did just cross the line. So yes, he did DNF on the final lap and finished up in P11. Kevin Magnussen was 12th, Grosjean 13th, Ricardo 14th, and then Russell Raikkonen and Kubica. And the other retirements, Antonio Giovinazzi, Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen. By the way, after Antonio's crash at the very end, he is okay. He is okay. So, yeah, that's great to hear. But now let's go on to the teams and how they did. First off, Mercedes. Now, I think they did have the fastest car today. It was pretty clear to see the Ferrari race pace-wise was not as quick. And really the only reason Lewis Hamilton didn't win today was because Ferrari's straight line speed was able to keep them ahead for long enough. For example, you know, when Sebastian Vettel was holding up Lewis Hamilton um, around lap 20, you know, six or seven, that really did hamper Mercedes um, and their chances of trying to win the race. Grip-wise, they had way more grip than Ferrari. And if Lewis had a bit more power, I think Lewis probably would have won today. But Sadly for him, it wasn't to be, but great drive anyway. He definitely gave Ferrari a right run for their money. Valtteri Bottas finishing third. I think Valtteri drove well today. 
There was quite a few times he did the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, but then at the end he completely dropped off in terms of pace for some reason. Uh, but finishing the third, good result, and I think Valtteri has had a good weekend because most of the time he has been relatively close to Lewis Hamilton in terms of lap time. So I think Valtteri has had a good weekend. And even though Mercedes have not won, a good weekend considering you know the power advantage that Ferrari do have over them. Talking of Ferrari, they have won their first Grand Prix of 2019 and this is their first race victory since Kota in 2018 at the 2018 US Grand Prix of Kimi Raikkonen and it is thankfully Charles Leclerc taking the victory. Not that I have anything against Sebastian Vettel but with the events of this weekend it was again fitting you know that Charles Leclerc won this Grand Prix and he drove so so well to win it because again the Ferrari was not the fastest car today it really wasn't and I think Charles Leclerc did so so well to to win in a car that was definitely slower than the one Lewis Hamilton and even Valtteri Bottas was driving great drive and he absolutely deserves this win it should have came at Bahrain but it has took time of course but eventually it has come it was only a matter of time because at the moment and when he isn't making mistakes he is a very very quick and very very good racing driver for Sebastian Vettel I think Sebastian for the team drove very well because he kept Lewis Hamilton behind for long enough so Ferrari could win the Grand Prix and I think Ferrari should absolutely thank Sebastian and so should um Charles Leclerc, for him, Sebastian Vettel driving for the team and driving for Charles Leclerc because if Sebastian was not there as a buffer between Charles and Lewis, then I think Lewis Hamilton would have won today. But because of Sebastian's very good driving with the tyre grip he had or the tyre life he had, I think Sebastian did the best he could. Uh, but for Ferrari, of course, great day, first race win, and hopefully they can get another win next week of course at their home race next up is red bull now for alexander alban very good day because he came from the back to finish in p5 just about passing sergio perez at the very end of the grand prix very very good drive by alban um is it the drive of the day maybe it is definitely up there i'll probably decide by the end of this video who my uh, driver of the day is but it was definitely one of the best drives out there because he, in the first half of the race, on the medium compound tyres that he started on, he wasn't looking that good. Then he put the soft tyres on and he flew through the field past the Toro Rossos, Renaults, Haases, whatever car was in his way, he got past it. So, you know, great for Albon. Great, great drive. Max Verstappen out of the race by Eau Rouge on the first lap. Now, I am going to do an incident analysis of this tomorrow at 12pm UK time of the incident between him and Kimi Raikkonen. But for me, I think Max Verstappen definitely did have at least some... Um, he has to accept some blame for what happened because he definitely went in there into that turn one a bit too aggressive for sure considering it was the first lap and I think he definitely has to share some blame for that but of course he was out very early on sad for the Dutch fans but the Dutch fans still got a great Grand Prix uh, but for Red Bull great for Albon but you know with Max Verstappen being out of the Grand Prix we don't know how quick the Red Bull would have been with Max Verstappen in the race so we'll never know how quick Max would have been and whether he would have been in the fight for the win but there you go, Red Bull uh, having a decent day. But now let's go on to the midfield. Now with Lando Norris's very late retirement, that did promote Nico Hulkenberg up to P8. And his drive was, I think definitely at the end, it was a good drive. He did drive well at the end to, you know, get into that position. But I think he did get slightly lucky to finish in P8. And I think the team Renault did. Um, to finish in that position but still good drive by Nico Hulkenberg to be in that type of you know position anyway for Daniel Ricciardo though I think Daniel today drove really well but the problem was the team gave him such a poor strategy for today's race 
they pitted him early on, I believe, to put him onto the medium compound tyres, and then he went 40 laps on that tyre. I don't know why Renault did that. What they should have done is what Albon did. Go until, I don't know, lap 25 on the mediums, and then pit for the soft tyres if they had any left. If they did that, that would have worked out, and Renault, with Daniel Ricciardo, would have been in a good position to finish in the points with Nico Hulkenberg as well. But they gave him a, you know, a strategy that just was not ever going to work. It was never going to work because if you're on a very long strategy like that around Spa, because it's so long, the lap, he was always going to be passed by Toro Rosso's and, you know, his teammate and racing points. It was always going to happen. So not good there by Renault. But even though, you know, Nico Hulkenberg finished in the points today, for me, still was not a good day for Renault because they were still outscored by Toro Rosso today. And of course, Toro Rosso are just ahead in P5 in the constructors. So not a good day for Renault. And considering their pace from qualifying, I, I really don't understand why they weren't really that quick today. I, I can't really explain why. Uh, next up is McLaren. McLaren, with Lando Norris, pace-wise, they were very, very good. And Lando, after Raikkonen and Verstappen collided, was in a comfortable P5. Uh, but then at the very end, retired with not even a lap to go, less than that. Big shame for Lando, because he drove so, so well. And he definitely deserved to finish in P5. But there you go. Those things happen. Um, it happened at Paul Ricard, of course, and it's happened again. Hopefully, you know, these issues for Lando can stop happening. But for Carlos Sainz, what an awful weekend. And it was his birthday today. How terrible is that? Um, stalled on the grid and then kept stalling even in the pits when he came back in. And then he pulled off after about two or three laps. So terrible day for Sainz and for McLaren. Yeah, very bad day, but they are still comfortably in P4 in the Constructors. So as long as they respond to this in Italy, I think McLaren will be fine. But now let's go on to Alfa Romeo. Alfa were looking great going into this race, but then it all fell apart. One for Kimi Raikkonen because Max Verstappen hit him at turn one. And the reason Kimi finished so low down was because he had quite a bit of damage to his floor and he couldn't really show any pace that he did have. But he couldn't show it because his car was not in a good way and he finished miles away from points. But the person I feel a bit sorry for, I have to say, is Antonio Giovinazzi because he was in the points, doing very well, and then he went off on the exit of Puon. Very, very um, scary accident, but... I think it's a bit of a shame for him because he was driving so well, but then went off at the very end. Big shame for him, but uh, I'm sure at his home Grand Prix, he will respond big time. But I think the Alpha team at Monza have to respond because they really should have had a good weekend in terms of points today, but they haven't. So they've got to respond to Alpha Romeo. Next up is Haas, who... Had a good start. They were in a good uh, position on the grid. But because of tyre wear and also high drag on their car in terms of the setup of their car, they had no good real opportunity to finish in the points. And I think finishing P12 and P13, I believe, is where they finished. I think that's a pretty good result considering the issues their car does have. And... Going into Monza, I think this will happen again. Very poor race for Haas. It was looking good, but it all fell away. Uh, next up, Toro Rosso. This team today was so good. So, so good. I don't know where their race pace came from, but for me, driver of the day today is Daniel Kvyat. Yes, I know Charles Leclerc drove very well. Not denying that he is one of the drivers of the day. So is Albon. But for me, Daniel Kvyat to come from P19 to P7 in a Toro Rosso car that this weekend has been probably one of the slowest on the grid, for me is the best drive uh, this weekend. And even though Albon had a great, you know, drive today, 
This drive by Daniel really does prove why he should be in a Red Bull car for 2020. Because to come from that far back on the grid to this position and be so quick is an unbelievable drive. So great by Kvyat. Gasly also, well done to him. P9, very good drive. Good to see that Gasly does have some fight in him though. That, that's very good to see that Gasly does have fight in him and that he's willing to go uh, wheel to wheel with people and really fight for his position not only on track but in Formula 1 so great to see there but great for Toro Rosso because they have scored 8 points today that is very very important for the constructors because now they pull away from Renault by I believe 4 points so Toro Rosso are still P5 in the constructors and you know what once we get into, you know, more races, I think Toro Rosso could actually finish in P5. I really think they could. So looking great there for Toro Rosso. And the last team, of course, is Racing Point. Uh, in terms of pace, very good. Sergio Perez, P6. A bit of shame uh, he lost uh, P5 at the end because of Norris, you know, dropping out of the album, passing him. It's a shame he lost P5, but... Sixth place is a great result for this team who need to start now climbing the constructors' table. And also, good drive by Lance Stroll. He did very well early on, did Lance, but then he dropped back for some reason um, around lap 30-ish, but then came back into it. So, good drive eventually by Lance, but a bit of a weird race for him. But for Racing Point, very good drive uh, by both drivers and a good result for them. That's nine points for them in the constructors, hopefully. They can start climbing some positions very, very quickly. And of course, Williams were at the back. Their pace wasn't actually that bad compared to other teams at certain points of the race. But they are still clearly, of course, the slowest in Formula 1. And guys, that is it for my race review for this 2019 Belgian Grand Prix. But guys, again, despite the race being a great race, great excitement, great battles... Please remember what is most important, and that is the loss of this young man's life. It has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.